Now, I want you to say what you just said about who's our main enemy and who, what's part of the main problem in the black community right here, right now. Say that again. The sister. black woman. Now, I want you to say what you just said about who's our main enemy and who, what's part of the main problem in the black community right here, right now. Say that again. The sister. black woman. Now, I want you to say what you just said about who's our main enemy and who, what's part of the main problem in the black community right here, right now. Say that again. The sister. black woman. to understand exactly what we're coming from, which is the way of the Most High God in the name of Christ. But see, the Lord works through all across all nations, the Israelites in all nations. Now, I want you to say what you just said about who's our main enemy and who, what's part of the main problem in the black community right here, right now. Say that again. The sister. black woman. Why is the that? Please woman. tell them why do you feel that way? Because she's the one that, she's the one responsible. She raises the child, the child listens to the black woman. And if she's looking up to things like this, you know, that's that's bombarding her brain. So she's not thinking as herself. She's thinking, you know, she's doing things that she sees on TV that's not realistic. It's not realistic because really and truly, TV's being controlled by, by Jews, basically. Right, right. So, so they want to put, yeah, so-called Jews, because right. we're the real Jews. There you go, but, sister. But they, they put things like this on TV, and of course they're going to depict us in a certain manner because they want us to... You know, they don't want people to know certain right. things. Yeah. Right. Now let me ask you this. When you hear the Israelites talk about the black woman is out of order, right? Do you consider us crazy? Do you consider us out of our minds? Do you consider us hateful because we say the black woman is out of order? No, no, because you're you're a man. The black man is, you know, you're doing what you have to do as a man. You see what I'm saying? Put order in the house. And the problem right now is the woman, there's no order. There's no order because they put her and she's the one controlling everything when really and truly us women are, we're undecisive so we can't make certain you know we can't do certain things men can do so that's your place as a man you know right. What I'm right now sister i'm glad you said that because your words is a testimony and i hope all of israel hears that and listen and heed to the words of the most High god in the name of christ now we ain't put this woman up to it. We ain't come here and tell her, oh, she gotta say this. As you can see, we do this week in, week out. This sister is just giving a testimony based on the spirit that moved her to say that. And we're gonna say it again. The black woman is off. But guess what? The black man is off too. But it's so rare that you find a woman come out and agree with us. Because nine times out of ten, most of the times the black woman come out here, she argue with us. She buck up against us. She fight us. She spit at us. She call police on us. You understand? She do all manner of wicked. As soon as we say something about, listen sister, you're out of order, get in order, she want to fight us. So it's refreshing and it's a good thing yeah. that you're coming out here giving your testimony. You understand what I'm saying? And it's and just a, it's a mind sickness, it really is, it really is, and we just need to wake up. Exactly. But our people, the only way they're going to wake up is through the scriptures. You understand what I'm saying? Our people, the only way they're going to wake up is if they cut off the damn TV, cut off the love and hip hop. Exactly. The basketball wise, all that China. madness. They in China, there was a time in China where they, they said the TVs were off. You have to cut off the TV. This is the only way these people actually had, you know, a chance to to to, to educate their, their people the way they, you know, the way they wanted to. Right. All right, this is Hosea 4 and 6. This is generic scripture, but it applies so specifically that it has to be read every time we come out to camp. It's Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. 
So because our people reject knowledge, the most high God is gonna reject us. Right? That we don't know that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, and I will also forget thy children. And that's exactly what happened in slavery. We forgot the laws of the Most High God, His commandments, and this is the end result. Actually, this is the action, and this is the result. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we forgot the commandments of the Most High God, like what? We shouldn't mark our skins, we shouldn't have tattoos on our skins. Right? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't change, we shouldn't cut the corners of our beards. The men supposed to grow no, their no, beards. Exactly. You don't see that out here. That's basically feminizing the man. That's not, you know, he's walking around shaving, but it's society. You have to right. do that to get a job. Well, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not the right way. But here what? Guess what's so funny? Mm -hmm. Even if you do shave your beard, you don't have to shave your heart. Because it tells you what is that in the book of Jeremiah? Why thou trim? Why so why do you trim us thou ways to seek love? Right. Mm -hmm. So even if a brother doesn't have a beard, he's supposed to have the beard in his heart. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So our people don't have that. Like you said, you you chose the perfect word. They are feminine. Because mm -hmm. once they cut their beard, it's like they cut their manhood internally and externally. And then they running around Yo. here looking like little children. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So basically, I'm glad that um you bringing that out. Look the brother you know what I'm saying? I wish more to, most of our people would wake up and see that yeah, too. Yeah, we need to wake up, for real. We really do. Because this is... It's mad right now. It's madness. You want to know No doubt, brother. Yeah. Bobby Quasi, Lost Equality. Okay, I gotta go down too. Yeah, bro. You need that. Thank you, bro. All right, bro. These, these are basically images of chariots. What a chariot is, is basically, it's a vehicle that the angels used to come through different dimensions. They are spoken of in the book of Ezekiel, a whirlwind within a wind, spoken of in the book of Isaiah, chariots that the Lord's angels are going to come in the book of believe, Isaiah 66, they're spoken of in the book of Revelation, they're spoken of throughout the whole scriptures. A chariot is what people will call a UFO, unidentified flying object, but they're really an IFO, an identified flying object, and they're chariots. Now, I must say that these chariots host angels and they also host demons. They host angels when Ezekiel saw them, he described the angels as being dark-skinned people. They host demons when white people get beamed up, they describe them as seeing them looking of uh, an angelic nature. But they get beamed up and they get, you know, operated on, tested on, humiliated, violated, and then they send them back down. So you have demons in these chariots as well as you have angels in the chariots. Just like the most High deals with positively and negatively. So when you hear people about talking about UFOs, you have to understand that all they are is just a, um, basically charged for the angels. And the angels reside inside of them. Basically, you know what I'm saying? So that's what that's about. But it's so funny because a lot of Edomites get beamed up and they get effed up for lack of a better word. They get effed up and they get come they get brought back down to earth. You know? An Edomite is the nation, is, the, is, the, is our enemy, basically. An Edomite is of, the, is of the nation of Esau, right? When you read the book of Genesis, it tells you of the, all the different nations that are walking on the earth right now. Esau is Jacob's brother, when you read the book of Genesis chapter 25. Jacob is the chosen seed that the Lord chose. He's Isaac's son. We are descendants of Jacob. Esau is, is Jacob's brother. The white people on this earth right now, they are descendants of Esau. That's why we, they, they are called the Edomites. But it tells you all through the scriptures that the Lord loves Jacob and he hates Esau. So once you know that, your next question should be, well, who is Jacob walking the earth right now? Jacob walking the earth right now are the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? These are Jacob's 12 children. And they are the progenitors of the nation of Israel. Right? The, that scripture is on the flyer right there also. This is the table of nations, right? You remember in, in the book of Genesis it talks about Noah's flood? That flood was real, right? After the flood subsided, right? And Noah landed on the mountain. And he had three sons that left the ark with him. Now through his three sons, they repopulated the whole earth. 
he had yeah, Japheth and Hashem. Japheth, all oh, you see right here, these sons, he's the progenitor of these people right here. Boma, Magog, and so on and so forth. Ham, he's the progenitor of the, basically the dark African races, right? And then you have Shem. He's a progenitor of these races, which are the chosen race, which is us. We are dark skinned just like Ham, but we're not Ham, we're different. So Shem had a son, Terah, and then Terah had um, his son, Abraham, and so on and so forth. So on this chart, I would be considered Zebulon. Zebulon, you're from Panama? From Honduras. Honduras, yeah, Panama and Honduras. Yeah, you're from the tribe of um, Zebulon. But we, as a whole, we are one nation. We're the nation of Israel. You know what I'm and what you need to basically understand is who we are, who Christ is, you know what I'm saying? How we got to be in that position right there through slavery. Because don't you know that a lot of so called black people got shipped from Africa to South America too? That's why you got a lot of black South Americans. I use the term black, I don't mean black, but I mean as a, as a nation. You know what I'm saying? Don't you know millions of people got a so-called um, so-called black people got shipped to Mexico, and from Mexico all the way down to the southern tip of Argentina. Oh, that's why you have black people in Peru, yeah, Colombia. Black people everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yet still, it's funny. You are black Latina. You what they consider black Latina, right? So you speak Spanish? Yeah. Why is it? It's so funny that whenever you speak to other black people of other nation, they still try to not all of them, but some of them still try to look up to the white man as being a higher person, try to aspire to be a white man. Exactly. Just like some black Latinas, they don't consider themselves to look beautiful unless they look like 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 a white woman. You know what I'm saying? And it's so funny. I always wanted to understand that. They come over here and they identify with the white man quicker than they identify with us. But yet, so when they look in the mirror, they black like us. They know it's bigger than us. That's because when you, you know? turn on like Univision mm -hmm. and Telemundo, exactly. everybody on there is white. Like that dude, that's uh, Don Francisco, Don Francisco yeah. and all that. That's they, they white. That's my mom. You know? That's it. All day. Yeah. And they don't show nothing. They don't show no black. Unless you're the maid. Unless you're the maid. Exactly. Unless you're the maid. Exactly. They are exactly. novella. Novella. All that, that uh, yo, sometimes you go in a bodega and mommy got the soap opera playing. There's nobody black in the soap opera. Not unless you see the maid come out. Si senora, si senora. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the maid come out and then she start cursing at her. And then she like, si senora. And then she go outside and do stuff. And then, like, get out of here. That's how I could see one of the things that I, I was struggling with was with my mom. My husband was trying to tell me, you know, keep your hair natural and all this stuff. And I couldn't understand it at the time because, like I said before, you're bombarded by this and you think that's beautiful. But you don't look at it, you know, you don't look at it because that was one of the hard things. And growing up watching Spanish channels, you don't see nobody, you know. So I thought that was abnormal, having my hair natural. Yeah. It's all right, but guess what? The most I guide you here for a reason, so you could, you know, wake up, teach your children, you know what I'm saying? And have them coming up different because if you look around, if you pan around and look at these people, they lost, man. Yeah, yeah. Savages, they lost. Like the Bible said, they're the valley of dry bones, you know? Only the Lord could blow breath of life on them and wake them up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. That's what it basically boils down to, man. Our people having some type of knowledge about themselves, their history, and, and waking up, man. Because you follow the white man, that's gonna lead you to death. Exactly. Perdition, hell, man, the grave. This, this is a serious thing because it's self-hate too. Because once you don't know yourself, and once you don't know, you know, you don't know to love yourself, you're not gonna love anybody else. Exactly. More than likely people who look like you. You know what I'm saying? This priest always say the right thing. You got all different nations here, so-called Israelites, so-called black people, right? <laughs> and we all united in one thing. We love the white man, right? I don't like you because you Dominican. I don't like you because you Puerto Rican. I don't like you because you Colombian. But we all love the white man. We out, we, we out here to smash that bullshit and tell the people like, listen, man, black is God's choice. That's the royal color. That's right. Jesus Christ is a brown, a dark skin. Not even brown. He's dark skin. That's right. Like Wesley Snipes. You know what I'm saying? He's black as however you want. Crispy black. That's right. Like, whoa. Christ had so, his hair was probably so nappy. His hair didn't even lay down. His hair was up here. He had a flow. Because the nappier your hair is, it sticks up. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. 